designed in the 1950s as a modern customer service library, and still fulfilling that function today as we move into the 21st century. South Branch Library at 27th and South Streets has enriched its neighborhood and the Lincoln community for more than 50 years. Let's enjoy a look back at a half century of service as we celebrate 50 years of South Branch Library. When South was opened in September of 1955, it was described as modernistic and was the first library planned and built in Lincoln since 1909. The new library is designed solely with public service in mind, Library Director Charles Dalrymple said at the time, adding that it featured the best arrangement to bring people and books together. Lincoln's first library was located on the second floor of this little store. By the late 1890s, it was housed on the second floor of the Masonic Temple, where it was destroyed by fire in 1899. Lincolnites raised money and convinced industrialist Andrew Carnegie to build Nebraska's first Carnegie Library, which opened in 1902 at 14th and N, the site of the current main library. The city's first branch library, another Carnegie building, was built in 1909 and named Northeast. It was located at 27th and Orchard Streets. It has since been moved several blocks north, but still survives, though it's no longer a library. Northeast would be the last library built in Lincoln for 46 years. But other Carnegie buildings joined the system as neighboring small towns were integrated into Lincoln. The College View Library, which today is in use by Union College. The University Place branch on North 48th Street which houses architectural and consulting firms today. And the Havelock Library, built in 1907, which no longer stands. Bethany also had a small branch library in rented quarters. But by the early 1950s, the design of the Carnegie buildings had become outdated. Mr. Dalrymple and the library board were looking for something new, and for a new type of library to serve the growing population of South and West Lincoln. They first considered a site just south of 28th and South Streets. Owned in those days by Lancaster County, which had acquired it in a tax sale in 1949. The triangular site is now known as Pokras Park, and then, as now, it was a playground for neighborhood children. Of course, libraries provide recreation for all ages, but it was decided that the library would find another place to build. And another site was soon found, thanks to library board member Dorothy Martin. Mrs. Martin's husband, Bennett S. Martin, was a local businessman and served as Lincoln's mayor. Dorothy Martin donated $3,500 to purchase the vacant southwest corner of 27th and South Streets where it shared a block with historic Westminster Presbyterian Church and was just a few blocks from the Martins' own home at 24th and South Streets. The Martins' contributions to Lincoln were many, and the downtown headquarters library still bears the Martin name. Plans for the new branch library were designed by architect Martin Aitken, shown here between board member John Ames and Charles Dalrymple on the right. By November of 1954, plans had been approved for a brick and glass structure costing $52,000, plus $5,000 for furniture and $6,000 for books. By September of 1955, what had been described in the newspaper as the South Side Branch Library was ready to open its doors to the public. South's first librarian was Mrs. Alice Lane, a graduate of the University of Minnesota Library School, who had spent the previous year developing the new library's collections. Looking at this old photo from the days when South was new, Mrs. Lane remarked on how few books there are on the shelves. But that's not really surprising, since the library held 6,000 books and was soon circulating 6,000 items a month. In this publicity photo, Mrs. Lane and a gentleman, probably board member John Ames, examined the periodicals on display. Those shelves are in nearly the same place today. And here she's checking out a book to Mrs. Martin, 
Look how spacious and modern the new branch was. And look how small the card catalog was. Can't be more than 30 drawers. South was the first Lincoln Library to be air-conditioned and featured a spacious meeting room area. It even had a modern kitchenette for the staff. All in all, a thoroughly modern and forward-thinking library. Library hours were 2 to 6 and 7 to 9 Monday through Friday and 2 to 6 on Saturdays. The late morning opening allowed large windows on the north and east without glare and heat and also allowed daylight for reading and a display effect at night. One library board member called the windows a billboard advertising the pleasures of books and reading. Sadly, they allowed a bit more than that. In May of 1959, a woman was injured when her brakes failed and her car crashed into the north windows, bringing a concrete support down on the car. Passengers in the car were her mother, visiting from Iowa, and her sister, who had just arrived in Lincoln that day from her home in England. Not a very good introduction to the capital city. It was a bit of luck, though, that the accident happened on a Sunday when the library was closed, so no library users or staff were injured. We suppose these trees were probably planted shortly thereafter in hopes of averting any similar incidents. Library tradition holds that these cracks in the pillar by the front door are a result of the accident. We can only hope that the driver's injuries were less long-lasting and urge caution at the busy intersection. On a happier note, South quickly became the most popular branch in the library system and a favorite for the neighborhood children. Mrs. Lane reports that they had to call in children's books from the other branches to meet the demand. Here, Mrs. Lane's successor, Norma Sitzman, reads a story to visiting children. And the children wasted no time in making known their appreciation of the library and books and the librarian as well. Miss Sitzman's successor would be Mrs. Edith Burton, shown here when the library's collection of circulating paintings was begun and here with a desk attendant and a much expanded card catalog. This newspaper photo shows Mrs. Burton's family using the painting collection as well, both her daughter and her young son identified as Chuck. Better known today as popular local musician Charlie Burton. Perhaps having a librarian in the family accounts for some of Charlie's consistently clever and literate lyrics. Who knows? Of course, it was inevitable that time would bring changes to the building through the years. A 1975 remodeling added an annex to the south side and created additional parking space as well. Inside, the collection was expanding, offering greater selection and new collections to meet the community's needs. The little library was making use of all the available space. The 1980s brought further changes and more new media to fill the shelves. Through it all, we hope we never lost track of the need to make our spaces inviting and attractive. And a late 90s remodeling enclosed the southwest portion of the building, making way for office space loading dock, and expanded work areas for staff. Remember the little 1950s kitchenette? Through it all, we've tried to remain modern, relevant, and contemporary as we've moved from the era of the card catalog to the age of the computer. Somewhere in there, though, the collections began to overpower the available space. Things were just filling up. I think you can see that the time had come to scale it back. And so, in recent months, under the direction of current Supervisor Myrna Tavis, here consulting with Assistant Library Director Mary Johns, South has been transformed again into the open and inviting appearance it had for so many years. Collections have been streamlined, and electronic access allows South's customers service on a par with any Lincoln Library. Areas have been opened up, repainted, refreshed, and space made for both the cutting-edge technology and a quiet place to read to your dog. 
of course. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Here, Mrs. Burton directs buildings and grounds supervisor Gail Reed, setting up a shelf of phonograph records during a 1970s remodel. And here, Myrna Tavis does the same thing with current building supervisor Gary Meyer. Only these shelves will hold compact discs and DVDs. We hope that South has returned to its roots, to being an inviting place to spend time or study, and at the same time, an efficient place to meet the community's needs and provide quality service. Now, before we take our leave, we'd like to take just a minute to remember some of the faces of South Branch Library, both from today and from years past. Perhaps there are some you'll remember. In closing, we'd like to thank you for spending a few minutes with us. We hope you'll agree that we've brought a fresh new look to this 50-year-old but still modern little library. And we hope you'll stop in soon and help us make new history at South Branch Library.